The phenothiazine derivatives are used in the treatment of different brain disorders such as mania, anxiety, uh, and intractable hiccups, for example. Um, here, well, it depends on what we say the side chain. It, it determines what group we have. So, for example, we have what we call the aliphatic. And the aliphatic side chain, if we have this ch side chain, we give, we get the medications clopromazine or trifluoropromazine. If we did the piperidine side chain, um, this piperidine is, give us, a med uh, the, th uh, the thioridiazine, which is right here. Okay. And, uh, the piperazine, which is the trifluoropyrazine or the flufenazine. And those are right here as well. Now, electron withdrawing group on the phenyl ring increases the antipsychotic activity. Okay, except if it's on uh, on C one. So what does that mean? Look at it here. So electron withdrawing group on the phenyl ring. Okay. This is going to increase the antipsychotic activity. So, if you take a look here, all these antipsychotics they have what they have an electron withdrawing group on the phenyl ring. Why? Because this increases their activity. So, if if you get this structure and they tell you, uh, and so all of these structures look the same, except one of them was missing an electron withdrawing a group. And they ask you which one of the following is inactive. You're going to choose the one that does not have an electron withdrawing group. Or if one of them had CL here, for example. Like instead of the one here or, or the sulfur here, it was an electron withdrawing group or CL on position number one. Uh, if that's the case, then this is not good, and because it's not going to make it active either. So, um, now the order of potency in position 2 is more than 3, more than 4, more than 1. Okay, so uh, let's repeat. The potency of the electron withdrawing group here, it's better than here, and here is going to be better than here, and here is better than here. So remember, we said we want an electron withdrawing group. Uh, so if it's here, it's uh, better than number three, and number three is better num than number four, and number four is better than number one. And again, the substitution on C1 position decreases antipsychotic activity. Why? Because it interferes with the binding of the uh, side chain. So the higher is the electron withdrawing power, the more activity it has. And multiple substitutions on the ring system decreases potency. So if I have like a CL here and a CL here, and a CL here, uh, this is not good for activity either. Um, if I'm going to convert the sulfur, if I'm going to convert it, okay, to, um, let's say, a sulfonoxide or a sulfone, this is, it's going to decrease activity, all right? So look how it looks here. This is perfect. If I'm going to switch it to a sulfonoxide, so this S, I'm going to get a double bond oxygen or a sulfone. Those two, those are going to be bad for activity as well, or potency. Now, the next is uh, the alkyl connector or the side chain. So if in the alkyl connector or the side chain, if I increase or decrease in the uh, the length of the alkyl side chain 
from three carbons it's gonna um, decrease the activity okay so if you count here I have one two three then nitrogen right so from this nitrogen to this nitrogen there are three carbon atoms this is perfect I go up I go down and the number of the carbon atoms is gonna make the product less active so molecules with two carbon side chain uh, those are h1 antagonists and, uh, and not dopamine blockers all right uh, activity decreases with substitution on the alpha carbon uh, so here if I were to uh, the alpha carbon right here now if um, if I'm gonna do a substitution of an alpha carbon like let's say I'm gonna add a, a CH to it uh, this is gonna decrease the activity the substitution on the beta carbon with methyl group increases or decreases the activity all right the gamma increases the anticholinergic activity and decreases the uh, the uh, the dopaminergic antagonism so the beta it might increase or decrease it the gamma it increases the anticholinergic so if i get uh, this structure and then one of the structures so the the question is which one of the following has more anticholinergic activity it's going to be the one that the gamma have substitution on it okay or has like a methyl group for example right here uh, so if if i have like uh, a ch here all right that means is this is going to be more anticholinergic um the last site is the nitrogen which is ter tertiary amine group have maximum potency substitution larger than methyl group it decreases the activity um the quaternary amino group containing molecules are inactive it happens because of posit uh, positivity charge so it cannot uh, uh, uh so it cannot pass through the blood brain barrier and that's what makes it inactive okay so if this nitrogen turn into a positive charge because of there are like multiple uh, multiple connections or multiple um, multiple substituents or branching to it this is not good why because it's, uh, that means the product is not going to make it to the blood brain barrier and so basically the product you're looking at is useless mainly three type of substitutions are possible um, and so those there are three type of substitutions that you can do it and this is what we're looking at here uh, this is one kind this is another this one is another one as well so looking at the structures here I'll just pay attention how all structures have electron withdrawing groups in the second position and uh, three carbon chain on all mo molecules so all of them is going to have one and two and three right so we have one two and three here as well um, So basically that concludes our talk about the um, the structure activity relationship of the phenothiazines.